right, welcome to the Fantasy Football Last Call Podcast, Week Eleven, dude. It's pretty crazy, man. Week Eleven, um, <laughs> it's gone by fast, and it's been seems like crazier and crazier every week, man. There's just another hurdle to to jump over. This week was just tons and tons of injuries, man. Um, and I'm jumping into it. I haven't even introduced ourselves. I'm Joe Bond. Dave Eddy with me. What's up, man? It's We're doing this late, so I was trying to hurry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're good, that. man. Uh, <laughs> nobody wants to hear our small talk. I'll just yeah. talk about something stupid. So. <laughs> yeah, but... Yeah, man, but... Dude, this week was just kind of nuts, man. There were so many, like... You know, just... If it wasn't enough with bye weeks and, and all the other injuries that we've had, it just little, you know, little nagging injuries got people to be called out, you know, or super questionable, like tonight's game, right? Bears and Rams. We had, you know, David Montgomery banged up all week. And so nobody could trust if he was going to play. So I took him out of all my lineups. Now he's not doing anything, so it's fine. But, you know, it's just another headache to go through it's just it was a rough week for me i'm not gonna lie i had a lot of tough decisions to make uh i don't, I don't know if you went through some of the same crap i know you're more dfs but uh it it was a rough one for me a season long yeah in- injuries can be fun in dfs because that's how you get a guy like brian hill at forty eight hundred dollars um to play just about every week um you don't really get that at the beginning of the year so Season long league, I, I totally get how that'd be, you know, frustrating. But DFS wise, it's always kind of a, a who's going to be your free square kind of player for the week. <laughs> yeah, although uh, you might have hoped you didn't play Brian Hill if you did, even though he was forty whatever hundred. <laughs> but ah, uh, yeah, he was so highly owned, oh. and um, it, it's kind of one of those things where when so many people are are going to do the same thing, it, it kind of is beneficial to do so because if he has a shitty game, well, that's okay because he has a shitty game for everyone. And if he blows up and you didn't have him, then you're 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 screwed. Totally screwed. Yep. Yeah, I've heard that. So, the other random news right before this game started, which has boned me in a couple different leagues. Uh, Robert Woods was inactive, completely random, uh, personal reasons, and you know, I guess just on a human note you hope everything's okay but it, it really sucked for me uh it's gonna make a couple of my a couple of my matchups a lot closer than they should have been so <laughs> hoping it works out for me um not a lot to take away from this game though uh i mean they're, they're running girly a lot more i guess that's the one takeaway i would say from it but other than that it's kind of bleh on both sides of the ball for offense so all right, let's so jump into some of a showdown. It, it makes it interesting for sure, I guess. Yeah. Uh, hopefully you started both defenses like me. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, man, let's get into these games. So we're going to start with Jets versus the Redskins. Jets took this one 34-17. I would be super excited as a Redskins fan, except now there's no Tua Tagliavola or whatever his last name is next year possibly. So that's that's kind of a bummer. Um so, yeah, on the Jet side here, Darnold's threw for four touchdowns. I mean, I knew it was a good spot, but, wow, I didn't expect that. Um, you know, Bell got in the end zone. Ryan Griffin got in the end zone. Crowder got in the end zone. It, it was just uh, the Jets taking advantage here big time. Um, I mean, we're not, we're not looking at this game and thinking, you know, the Jets are going to be, you know, viable, especially like Darnold, right? Like, we're not – Outside of Bell and maybe Crowder, like we're not looking at the Jets going like, oh my God, they're back. I mean, I guess you had to be there before you could be back. Um, <laughs> True. But, hey, Bell. What, well, what's okay, Bell and Crowder are decent. I I actually really like a lot of these guys that are on the Jets, and I I know it's stupid, but um, I mean, I don't like them enough to actually do anything with them. But this just Jets team is just one that for some reason. Just in my in my heart, I just like them more than I should. And I, I don't know why, but yeah, I'm kind of the same way. I mean, the, me, the, but 
I just like a lot of their guys. Yeah, I mean, I think the the name value and the and the talent is there, but the the team and the scheme is just not working very well for them, unfortunately. So I think overall, it's kind of a a meh option for fantasy in most cases. But you're probably going to use you know at least Crowder and Bell most weeks. Uh, Darnold seems to be more of a super matchup type of guy uh, when he plays the Redskins. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, go. On the Redskins side, Haskins got his first touchdowns, uh, two of them this week, uh, but otherwise a very blah day. Geis got in the end zone on a on a long running catch, a little slick uh, juke there too to get in the end zone. To kind of pretty nice there. So good, good to see that guy get in the end zone too because he's had a, a really rough start to his career. But I mean. I guess outside of Geis, are we are we excited for anything on this team, especially with Haskins under center? Um, yeah, it's tough. Um, I mean, until you start to see more from Haskins, it's kind of hard to even trust McLaurin at this point. So, um, you know, nice to see Geis, who's you know, <laughs> you know, just been just injury riddled um, from the get go. Nice to see him finally get back. And like you said, he, he had a nice little touchdown there. So. Yeah, uh, I'm sure he's feeling good about that. So, um, I don't know. We'll we'll see. I'm I'm not really ever planning on playing a Redskin. So I guess I don't really give a shit if we're being honest. But no, nah. um, I, I but don't, it, don't blame me. Keep your eye on. Don't blame me at all. Moving on here, Cowboys Lions. Cowboys win 35 to 27 on the Cowboys side. Uh, Gallup had a big day, nine for 148. 13 targets. Uh, Zeke a little bit of a down game. Did get in the end zone, but 16 for 45. Um, Randall Cobb had a nice game. Dak though, four forty four and three touchdowns, just airing it out. I mean, a little note here to bring up here was, I mean, is this Dak's team now? For the longest time, it's been Zeke's. I mean, I don't watch every Cowboys game, but it it sure feels like that. Um, I mean, they were. They were, you know, passing the ball in normal cowboy running situations a lot. Uh, you know, it's just, you know, Dak is just having such a great year. It and, is. you know, Zeke kind of, I mean, kind of isn't. So I don't know if it's just the new offense that they have going on or, does, you know, Zeke piss somebody off or what. But, <laughs> um, I mean, it, it sure seems like it's kind of, you know, the needle's kind of moving more towards Dak than it is Zeke. Yeah, it sure does seem that way. I mean, as a Zeke owner in season long, you're not, you know, you're not mad or anything about what he's given you, but I think you were hoping for more. But uh, yeah, D- Dak looks like the real deal uh, more often than not this season. On the line side here, we got Jeff Driscoll again behind uh, under, under center. I mean, okay day, two two oh nine and two touchdowns. Um, so I, I got a couple things that I know. You know, you're a Lions fan. So Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> hey, you got you guys got it better than us right now. Um Bullshit. So, so first off, Marvin Jones got in the end zone twice. But Galladay, what the hell happened to Galladay? Did he just get like bracketed the entire night? Like I didn't catch you know, except I mean just Jones zero. is a really good corner from the Cowboys. Um and he was mostly on Galladay. And then, you know, <laughs> throw in the fact that they they can't run the ball. Right. Um, and Except. then throw in the fact that, <laughs> you know, a guy that's, you know, ha- it was on his way to a Pro Bowl season that quarterback is out. And we got Jeff Driscoll, who I bet you 90% of Lions fans didn't know who he was three weeks ago. You know, got him throwing him the ball. I mean, I, you know, uh, what, what, do you, what do you expect him to do, you know? I guess. I mean, I, I just kind of wonder, you know, especially in season long, are you still just throwing Galladay out there as like a must start option? You know, it, it I, gotta, I don't see how you don't. Yeah, it's just, it's tough though, man. When you get weeks like this, but the other question I want to ask you is, who in the living hell is Bo Scarborough? <laughs> Dude, that's you know what you know what's funny. I didn't know that we had signed him to the practice squad, but I mean, I remember him from from Alabama. And- so the name sounds familiar. I just had no today, idea. Yeah, I mean, yeah. When I when I first seen him carry the ball today, I'm like Scarborough. I'm like Bo Scarborough. I'm like, when the hell did we sign him? I don't know, man. I mean, the Lions' running game is literally the last thing in the world that we need to waste our time talking about. Hey, though, 
Fourteen fifty-five and a touch. That wasn't too bad. I mean, I mean probably one of the best you guys have had all year. He looked, sadly, he looked all right today. Yeah. Um, I mean, the touchdown he got was was just effort. Um, yeah. Hey. But I I don't it's, listen. I would have been thrilled if they would have you know drafted him when you know when he came out. Um, I mean, he's a big bruising back. I just you could put just about any running back back there. And they're going to be terrible. That that line is built for blocking, um, for for pass blocking. They're not run blocking. I, I don't care who you put back there. The the Lions are not going to probably run the ball in my lifetime. <laughs> yeah. All right. Moving on here. Jets and Colts. Uh, Colts take this one, thirty three to thirteen. So Nick Foles returns, and he does all right. Two ninety six and two touchdowns through through a pick. Uh, the you know the. The thing everybody was was wondering is is if DD was going to be the guy or if it was still going to be Shark or you know if 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 Conley was going to be more involved and uh, it looks like it's Shark Conley DD at least for one game so far. Uh, Shark is definitely still the guy. That's kind of what I I predicted last week. You know he's he's earned that right to be the number one. This looks like what it's sticking with. Um, Fournette did didn't do much on the ground, but at least got at least caught uh, seven passes. So in PPR leagues, you're happy there. But um, you know what? What's your take on on this offense now with with uh, a game with Foles under center? I think it'll be you know pretty similar to what what they had with Minshew, only just more efficient. So um, you know, eight carries for Fournette wouldn't you know I wouldn't worry about that too much because. I mean, it, you know, it, if there's a workhorse in the league, um, you know, it's Fournette. This was just game script. Yeah, you know, they, got they got behind, behind They had to throw the ball. Um, Foles yep. threw it 47 times. So I, I think you're just going to get a more efficient version of what they were with Minshew. Yeah. On the Colts side of the ball, uh, Brissett, you know, only 148 yards. got a touch. Didn't really have to do much. Like you said, the run game for them was, was clicking. Um, Marlon Mack did, did really well. You know, the unfortunate part is uh, Mac did leave in the third quarter, did not return with a hand injury. We saw Jonathan Williams come in and pick up the slack, 13 for 116. So uh, they were just running all over this team for whatever reason. Um, if if Marlon Mack is forced to miss time, I mean, is Williams the guy now? I mean, I think a lot of people would have thought it would have been, you know, Wilkins or, you know, Naeem Hines. Is he going to be, you know, the one you want to start instead of Williams? But Williams looked good, that's for sure. I mean, I would have put money on Hines. Um, right. Until Williams, you know, puts up 100 yards today. So I, I, I guess I don't know enough about that Colts backfield because I hadn't heard of Jonathan Williams before today. So when I saw, you know, um, you know, the box score, I mean, I, I saw the game on red zone, but um, when I saw the box score, I had to refresh it to make sure that I wasn't seeing something incorrectly. Um, yeah. I don't so know if I, Wilkins was I, I inactive know. or something, but it seems weird that all of a sudden he was the guy and that Wilkins didn't even see work like it. Cause Jordan Wilkins is the guy that I always thought would have been the next man up to get the run you know, to get the majority of the carries and then Hines is still going to stay in his role. Like that's, that's his role is, is that change of pace, you know, third down back kind of guy. Um, so it, it'll be, it'll be interesting. Something I definitely want to look out for here, but moving on bills and dolphins bills win 37, 20. Um, this was a, a very good Josh Allen day, I guess. Um, you know, and, and he definitely reaped the benefit. John Brown reaped benefits nine for one thirty seven two touchdowns. Uh, thanks to some news I got earlier in the day, I was dumb and sat John Brown. Uh, oh my! Stupidity! Wow. Stupidity! What was stupidity. that? What the hell was that news? Oh, uh, I don't know, man. Uh, I don't want to mention it. It's really dumb now that I think about it. Um, it was the fact that Lindsey was going to get the majority of the work in in Denver, so I was like, oh, I'll take a workhorse back over a, a Buffalo Bills receiver. Bad, bad decision. Oh, wow. Bad decision. Okay. You should. Hey, you need to start uh, texting me before you make such moves, man. Hey, I threw out all sorts of stuff on Slack and nobody responded. It's all right. I feel the love, guys. Um, yeah. So Allen had a good day. Three touchdowns in the air. I mean, with. It, I think you know we know what the Bills are. This was just them playing Miami, I would imagine, right? You know, this is why the the offensive stats were a little more bloated than we usually get. 
I would say so. I, I think this is, you know, this is going to be Allen's, you know, highlight game of the yeah. year. Um, I, I, I had him, well, I, I had him in a few different um, lineups and, and I kept kicking him out just because I, you know, I, I've always said he's got a, a good floor, but his ceiling sucks. And even this week, I, I just kicked him out of what, you know, what the optimizer was giving me. Um, and I guess I don't regret it too much, just you know, because I had a lot of Lamar Jackson. But um, yeah, that yeah, worked out is, okay. <laughs> yeah, it turned out all right. But you know, this I think is at least for this year that this is going to be his ceiling. Um, he doesn't, you know, throw for three touchdowns very often. Yeah. So no, I, I wouldn't see, expect it a whole lot, but it was nice if he had him. That statement that you said right there is exactly why I benched John Brown. Is right. Allen doesn't throw for a lot of touchdowns. So, like, what's the upside of John Brown? Oh, John Brown is so consistent. Like, John Brown's different. Um, he is good, but like, he lacks the touchdown upside. At least I thought like oh, I he could fall in the end zone, right? You know, if he's gonna get oh, yeah, double the work, be the high John Brown. Exactly. Brown so I was, um, I'm looking at it going like, least, you've got to be kidding me. John Brown gets <laughs> his, you know, wow. right. All right, on the Finn side, um, yeah, whatever. I want to move on. I don't want to talk about that game anymore. <laughs> um, Dolphins, um, I mean, <laughs> I had a lot of questions about Ballage, interestingly enough, and, and I, you know, I, I told a lot of people to sit him, and, of course, you know, he got, a, you know, like five catches, so that's okay. And then he, he got in the end zone, but nine rushes for nine yards. I mean, like my – the reason why I told everybody to sit him is his Ballage isn't good, right? And that shows it right there, nine for nine. Now, he might be talented, but obviously we know the offensive line isn't talented. So I just you don't use the Miami running game, period, guys. Um, don't look at this one and go, oh, but he had 13 points because of five catchers and a touchdown. No, 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 no. Um, the question here is, like, Parker's actually turning into a very valid option here. I mean, he's had a bunch of really – good games here i mean is this somebody that we can actually trust i mean if you that's literally the question that i proposed to you last week you know i I believed in him as of last week um so i mean i would say yes now as soon as we both get to you know agree on that point he's gonna you know have a catch for for three yards next week um but yeah i mean he he definitely seems like the guy there and i Again, another guy like, I wouldn't say like John Brown, but kind of, you know, been very consistent over the last, I don't know what, five, six weeks or so, I think, um, you know, double digit points. I, I don't know what more you were, you know, what more you're looking for out of him. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it's just, it's the Dolphins, so it's hard to trust any of them. But um, yeah, I mean, yeah, they should be behind though. So <laughs> that's true. Pay, You're going to you see know, volume, I suppose. For Fitzgerald. Yep, I suppose you will see volume. Uh, mm-hmm. So the Broncos Vikings game. So of course this was the game that you know made me make a bad decision. Um, <laughs> so and not you know not a ton offensively. I guess like I don't. It wasn't it wasn't like anybody really stood out here. Uh, Sutton you know is is looking like he's still going to be a a valid. Um, a reliable target here as like a wide receiver two, three, you know, low two, three range. Um, the story is again, after the announcement, you know, Lindsay is going to be their lead back. Um, is this just, you're just gonna, you're just gonna plug in Lindsay and Freeman's going to be a wait and see type of guy. Like, you know, just desperation play, uh, by week, we only got one more left. Uh, you know, or just if you're just really destroyed by injuries, he's the only reason why you're using him. And Lindsey's the only one you really want to you only want to use. I mean, that's how I would look at it. Um, I mean, we we've talked all year long about what a you know what a damn shame it is that one of these guys, uh, preferably Lindsey, you know doesn't doesn't start to get the the main share. Now, I think this was kind of a a bad week to you know, set the example because Minnesota has still been pretty good against the run. They've mm-hmm. surprisingly been pretty shitty against the pass, but they've been pretty good against the run. And, you know, Lindsay had double the carries that, that Freeman had. They were equally efficient. But, you know, if Lindsay is going to really be that guy going forward, um, and that's something that I definitely would want to see, you know, again, before I fully trust it, 
yeah. then I think that that really starts to put Lindsay, you know, up in the upper echelon of receivers, not receivers, uh, upper echelon of running backs. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I, I agree with you. He's, uh, he's been efficient this year. So if he can get the work and he's all double the amount of work th- today. So, you know, you hope to see it going on, uh, on the Vikings side of the ball, they got behind early man and had to make a really big comeback and it, and it, and it worked, man. Um, it was, it was a really good game in the second half by the Vikings. The first half, not so much. Uh, and it was basically all cousins, man. Like cook did not get things going. The Denver defense really shut him down. Now cook did get in the end zone. Uh, that kind of saved his day, but otherwise there's really not a lot, but cousins, three nineteen, three touchdowns. Diggs went five for one twenty one in the touch. Uh, we saw Irv Smith score. We saw Rudolph score. Um, I mean, it is, I mean, we're all starting Cook and Diggs regardless, and that's not a question. You know, you're not taking a Cook one bad game and going, oh, I don't know about him. Um, but I guess the, the question is really, is Cousins somebody that we can reliably use every single week now? I mean, this is this was a good game against a fairly good defense. Yeah, I mean, if anything, the Broncos, you know, you can run the ball on them. So you, you would expect, you know, Cook would have the, the big day, not, right. not, you know, not Cousins. So... Agree. Um, I mean that that's about as good of a pass defense as there is, and I mean they did have their hand forced. They were down twenty nothing early, um, and part of the reason that you know the Broncos um, stat line doesn't look better. And granted, they only scored twenty three points, but when they scored those points early, a lot of it was because they were getting great field position off of turnovers. Um, so so that helped. But you know, Vikings were forced to throw the ball. Uh, they didn't have Thielen, uh, obviously, for today's game. And I mean, Cousins had a great game. He was not only efficient, but he was effective. Uh, and that's without their top target. So, I mean, obviously, if you're talking season long, it kind of depends on who your quarterbacks are. I, I don't know how many people necessarily started Cousins or, you know, drafted Cousins with the expectation he was going to, you know, be there, you know, QB1. But um, uh, no. yeah, I, I, think he's, <laughs> I think he's earned our trust um, until he starts to show otherwise. He's. He's had quite a few good weeks here lately. Yeah, he's he's definitely something I, I would look at. I would look at uh, for sure. Uh, next game here: Saints and Bucks. Saints win thirty four seventeen. Um, Breeze had a, a good game: two twenty eight and three touchdowns. Kamara looked like he he's uh, starting to look like Kamara again. Uh, Seventy five on the ground, forty seven. Excuse me, forty seven on the in the air of ten targets caught all ten of them as well. Um, and then, you know, Michael Thomas just <laughs> Mr. Reliable, Mr. Consistent, 8 for 114 in the touch, man. This guy's just a monster. Um, your, your question you wrote down is <laughs> pretty funny. Is there a man besides Michael Thomas you would let father one of your children? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Oh, uh, man. Uh, it's... He'll make a good football player. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I mean, you know, the, the one, th- you know, the thing that I like about guys like Sutton and DJ Moore and, and John Brown ha- have been how consistent they are. Now, the the difference between them and Michael Thomas is, you know, Michael Thomas can have a absolutely just off the charts game, but he also is ungodly consistent. So, I, I don't know if I would, you know, say that, you know, Michael Thomas is like underrated, but right. I don't think that. Unless you no. own him, that you understand how consistent he is. He he's not like a, a Mike Evans who you know might go quiet for a week or two and then all of a sudden two hundred yards and three touchdowns. He just does it every week. I yep. mean, eight for one fourteen in a touchdown, and you don't even feel like he had a great game, and that's crazy because he yeah, did. It's like his norm. It's pretty crazy. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, it's got a little of the Julio effect, man. Um, so Buccaneers side, we've got you know Winston with a with a four interception game, but saved it with you know just garbage time, just volume three thirteen and two touchdowns. Um, I mean, you know Evans and Godwin are, are kind of you know as you mentioned right, like this was an, an Evans kind of down game, four for sixty nine. Godwin's been kind of on the on the downward slope for a few weeks. It feels like three for four forty seven did get in the end zone at least, but that was, I mean, it still like overall wasn't a good game. 
I mean, you're still just plugging these guys in, right? In a season long league, you can't sit them, right? I have no idea how you would be able to justify sitting Evans or, or, or Godwin unless you're playing in like a two team league or something. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. It's just tough, man. When Winston has these four interception games, it's just not going to be pretty. Um, I don't know. It's the. I guess the the one the one thing I besides that I mean everybody's going to start the same guys for these you know for the Bucks but the one thing I will say is I think the OJ Howard experiment in Tampa is over. Uh, he had the very first target to him bobble off his hands. He kind of like rolled it around his back and then he like flipped it up in the air and then it got picked. He didn't see another target the rest of the day. In fact, Cameron Bright saw 14. Yeah, if that isn't a F you to O.J. Howard, I don't know what is. <laughs> so, bye-bye, O.J. Howard. You will not be started in any of my leagues for the rest of the year. And yeah, I would that, not be surprised. That Howard if... pick was goofy. Um, like you said, he he kind of bobbled it, and it went on his back, and he's trying to catch it, and then it went up in the air. So, um, <sighs> you feel bad. Is that one of the... He had two goofy picks today, yeah. kind of. So, when you see four picks, you think, oh, God. He, you know, he, he went crab legs on us. Um, right. But it wasn't as bad nice. as you would think when you see four interceptions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. I did. I, I, I must have missed one of the other, like, goofy picks, but I, I do remember the first one with, with well, Howard. Evan, so. Evans ran a stupid – well, I don't know. what It was one of the two. If there was miscommunication, um, Evans ran one particular way, and Jameis kind of threw it the other, and it was it was a pick six. Um Oh, I did. I did see that, and I was sort of happy because I have the New Orleans Saints defense like everywhere today. So, yeah, I was like, "Oh, well, Winston's my quarterback," but I don't really care as much. All right, Um, Falcons, Panthers, Falcons just smash the Panthers twenty nine to three. You know, the offense was was good in the air. The run game was non existent. Even Brian Hill. Um, who was getting a lot of hype, like you said, as the price was low on DFS. You know, it's a good matchup because the Panthers can be run on. They're like 29th fantasy points allowed to defense or to running back. So the matchup was there for Hill to, to eat, but it just didn't happen. Uh, Ridley was really, really good. Julio was, was good. You know, he didn't get in the end zone, but, you know, six for 91, you'll take it. Uh, the real story is, man, like what's, going on with the Falcons defense like I want I want whatever they're taking I don't know it's it's kind of goofy like they, they did make a change and it, it it's unusual to me and I guess correct me if I'm wrong but I I've never heard of such thing they they've got two different guys calling plays on defense one guy calls the plays on first and second down and the other guy who was their wide receiver coach um Calls plays on third down. It's weird, but I mean, that's two weeks in a row now where that defense has been just disgustingly good. So you know, hey, I'll I'll take it. Maybe Matt Patricia can you know take some notes. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm trusting the Falcons defense in 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 season long yet. But uh, if they if they have another performance like this, I might have to. Um, yeah, that, that, that's crazy. Speaking of really good defenses lately, Texans, Ravens, Ravens just put a smackdown on on Texans, forty one to seven. Man, like this was supposed to be like a high scoring back and forth game. Uh, the Ravens were playing football against themselves today. Like it was just <laughs> they didn't matter. Um, you know, so Texans side here, just I mean Hopkins. Seven for eighty, I guess you'll take it. Hyde got in the end zone with sixty-five yards and a touch. It wasn't pretty, man. Watson was bad. In fact, was pulled kind of in the middle of the fourth quarter, just you know, waving a white flag. Um, I mean, this was just a case of the Ravens' D came to play, right? I mean, at least you hope so. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, Will Fuller was out, but I don't think that Will Fuller's worth thirty-four points. Yeah. Um, so I think it's just a. I think it's a combination of things. I, I think it was just, you know, Ravens defense was, was good. And I think it was just, you know, one of those off weeks. Yeah. I mean, I will say I this Hopkins, Hopkins yeah. probably should have had a touchdown, man. And uh, he got like 
basically mauled in the end zone. No PI call. They tried to challenge it. Of course it didn't get reversed, even though it absolutely should have. The announcers, the you know, the ref in the booth was saying it should have been reversed, and then Twitter was going nuts, and then it wasn't reversed. Like, it's just this is the most ridiculous. Why do we even have challengers on PI calls if they're not going to get reversed? Like, if any of them were going to get reversed, it was that one. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure if, if Helen Keller was out there, she would have she would have threw the flag. It's very possible. <laughs> um, so Ravens, man, like Lamar does it again, Mister MVP in my book, man. This guy this is a monster. Uh, 222, four touchdowns in the air, 86 yards on the ground. Just incredible, man. Um, Ingram had a had a good day, you know, two touchdowns. Uh, Gus Edwards had a really long run, kind of boosted his stats, but you know, overall good day. Andrews is looking like he's returning back to form, so everything's looking up for the Ravens, man. There's just you got you want to plug these guys in, right? I mean, all of them. It feels like pretty much. I mean, you know, I, I think I, you know, obviously Lamar is just on this pace that's just ungodly. It's almost like the question really becomes like, can he maintain, you know, even this pace or 80% of this for the rest of the year? Like, you know, with with the way he plays, I think the expectation is eventually, you know, he gets banged up or gets hurt. And, you know, we're far enough into the season now where I guess the question really just becomes, is is he going to be able to survive the year or is he going to, you know, just, take one too many hits on these runs. Yeah, you do you do worry it's just going to take like one wrong hit and it's just it's over, man, cuz uh, we 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 do see it. Um All yeah, right, Car- is, if he does miss time, I I mean this could be a humongous stretch, I guess, but um you know, Robert Griffin is is a similar type quarterback, so I mean, it, you know, is is that system solid enough that Griffin can come in and give you, you know, 60, 70% of what Lamar was doing and, and still be effective or, or, you know, with Lamar out, does that just completely piss away their season? Uh, as a Redskins fan, <laughs> I'm going to go with, it will not be a fun stretch of games for the Baltimore yeah, Ravens if, he, if he's in that, there. Right? So, all right. Cardinals 49ers 49ers take this one 36 26 this is uh two weeks now man both games Cardinals putting up good number of points against the 49ers uh pretty shocking um you know Murray Murray you know only 150 through the air but two touchdowns ran for 67 and another touch so it's uh it's it's looking like he's kind of matchup proof at this point would you say oh man uh I mean, I mean, if you can do it against the Niners. <laughs> I know. It's so tough. Twice. I mean, two, two games against the Niners, and he's had good games. So, oh, man, it's just so hard to call him matchup proof. But, but man, I mean, you you could see him turning into a, a better passing version of Lamar down the road. I yeah, mean, it's I very know, possible. I mean, it's possible, right? I mean, he's probably he's probably faster than Lamar, right? Um, uh, and I, yeah, I, I would I have to – I'd say it's pretty safe bet he throws the ball better than Lamar. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But, yeah, man, if you own a piece of Murray, I think you're pretty happy about it. Yeah, definitely. Um, so the other interesting story here is that David Johnson was active, and I really hope you didn't start him because he really didn't play. Uh, zero everything. <laughs> Uh, Kenny Drake, 16, 16 rushes for 67. Not a bad day, really, against the San Francisco defense. But, um, I mean, what do we do with David Johnson now? I mean, thankfully, they've got a buy. Maybe he'll get right. But, I mean, what are you doing with this guy in, in season-long leagues? I know, obviously, DFS, you're just avoiding, right? But season-long, like, uh, I mean, you just plugging him in because he's David Johnson? Or are we just sitting him on the bench and hoping? I mean, God, I, I mean, I don't – I obviously wouldn't cut the guy quite yet, but uh, I don't know how you can start him. Um, yeah, I, I, I benched him. It really depends on your line or, you know, what your roster looks like, but I can't really see starting him at this point. Yeah, I uh, 
I did bench him in in a dynasty league that I'm in, and trust me, my running back depth is is okay, but not not enough where I ever thought I'd be benching David Johnson. Um, yeah, I bet. It, it's it was a tough call, man. I'm just like, uh, I don't really want to do this, but I'm going to, and then whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe it, you can trade him for Bo Scarborough. <laughs> I don't think I'm ready. Can get both Scarborough and like you know, like three months of roast beef sandwiches or something. Sure. Um, yeah, not quite ready to do that, but it's <laughs> it's not it's not pretty, man. Um, just hope he gets better. I just think he's banged up and just not 100 percent clearly. So on the 49ers side yeah. here, uh, Jimmy G, man, you know they had to make a comeback too, so he had to throw the ball a lot. Uh, 45 times. It's pretty not. It's pretty abnormal for him. 424, four touchdowns. Did throw the ball. Did uh, to the other team twice. Uh, no running game here, man. Coleman didn't really get it done. Um, it just Breida, you know, Breida was out. It, it you still expected this run game to get it going because it's Arizona, but it just didn't. Um, so you know, it is what it is. Uh, Debo kind of ate today though, eight for one thirty four and ten. Uh, I mean, I, I I think this is just one of those they got behind and. And Jimmy G had to throw the ball a lot. I think this team still wants to to smash it out on the ground. Um, but I mean, any any sort of hope that like the passing game is really turning the corner here, and you can you can use Jimmy G going forward at all, especially with Kittle I, coming I back and Sanders getting healthy. I don't think so. Uh, like I said, it you know he had to throw the ball forty five times, and I, I'm willing to bet that they didn't plan on ever throwing the ball forty five times this year. I'm just I'm not sure if it's more surprising that. You know, they had to throw the ball, and he put up, you know, 400-plus yards and four touchdowns. Or if it's more surprising that, you know, they face that Arizona team and they really couldn't muster a run game whenever they're, you know, the most run-heavy team in football. I, I, I think it's more surprising that they couldn't run the ball. I mean, I understand that they had to throw a lot, but even when they did run the ball, they, they weren't successful. Yeah, I don't know. It's more surprising either, but... Yeah, I'll just chalk it up as a little outlier here, but you know you'll you'll take it if if you started Jimmy G and you know Samuel and things like that. So, uh, Bengals Raiders Raiders win seventeen to ten. This was a pretty blah game, honestly. Um, Bengals side, I think really the only take here is that Mixon looks like he's just rejuvenated, man. Like I don't know what it is, but the two games in there with Finley, he's looked good. Um, I actually risked it and started him today, even though I kind of put him on my shit list earlier this year. Uh, I was like, you know what? He ran for 100 yards last week. Let's let's see what let's see if he's back. And 86 and a touch, man. Uh, I, I mean, are we looking like we can take him off the shit list a little bit, or we we still a little wait and see? I mean, I, we've seen two weeks now. Um, it's just it's one of those things that logically doesn't make any sense, like. It doesn't seem logical that you, you know, put a worse quarterback in. Everything else on the offense is the same. And all of a sudden, Mixon is is playing better. Like, they didn't get a new offensive line. If, if right. anything, you know, you would think that teams would be stacking the box to stop Mixon. I, I 100% agree. Team. I have no idea and, why it's working, but it's working. And I'm going to take I, it because yeah, I need him. <laughs> I don't. I can't, I, I can't explain it, but, you know, I, I he he looked good today. It's crazy. He definitely did. So uh, on the Raiders side here, you know, Carr looks pretty good. A two ninety two and a and a touchdown in the air. He ran for one two, I believe. Um, Jacobs twenty three yard twenty three carries for one hundred twelve. Just didn't get in the end zone, but you you'll take all the yardage. Uh, Waller stepped back up again today, five for seventy eight and a run for a man. Run from's looking like a, a legit like flex type of play, especially PPR. You know the the guy that we all thought he was going to be after you know A B and all that drama went down, right? Like we just thought that oh Renfro was going to be this like PPR magnet, uh, and he's finally rounding into that. Um, but what what do you what do you, what's the takeaways here for this Raiders offense? I mean, I, I think the takeaway is you know first of all they played the you know they played the Bengals, but um, I, if I am a Waller owner, um, you know the, the fact. The, that you know Renfro, like you said, has been you know stepping up here the last few weeks. Um, I don't think it's any coincidence that you know that's why Waller has had, you know been down. Yeah. Now you know they they did he, he did fine today. Like I said, five for seventy eight. But 
they're also facing a almost historically bad, um, you know, Cincinnati defense against the tight ends. The only mm-hmm. reason it's not talked about more often is just because there happens to be a team that's worse against tight ends. But um, yeah, if I'm if I'm a Waller owner, I guess I'm not, you know, making any panic moves. But I, I'm definitely concerned about you know Renfro stepping up and you know Waller being the victim of that. Yeah, I mean, especially with the state of tight ends, you really can't complain about five for seventy-eight. So, uh, right. tight end, tight ends, pretty crappy this year. Uh, the last game here, Patriots Eagles. Patriots win seventeen to ten. Not exactly the uh, the offensive uh, performance we were thinking we'd get from the Patriots, but I guess you know if you're a Patriots fan, you're. You'll take the win, man. Uh, Brady was kind of pedestrian, I guess. Uh, you wrote the same word. That was funny. Uh, he was pretty pedestrian today. You know, two sixteen, and that was it. Uh, the one passing touchdown actually came from Edelman, who also caught five for fifty three off ten targets. The running game wasn't really getting it done. Like you kind of thought that the Patriots would take advantage of this Eagle secondary, and it just didn't didn't really happen. Yeah, I thought that this was going to be a much higher scoring game than than what people thought. And clearly, I was wrong. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it was just uncharacteristic from what you would think as far as, you know, New England throwing the ball around. This seemed like a game where, you know, Adelman was going to go crazy. Brady was, you know, going to have a great game. And then, you know, maybe they'd sprinkle the run in, you know, as needed. But definitely didn't go that way. Yeah, and then so on the Eagle side, uh, it was fairly ugly, dude. Wentz, uh, Wentz just kind of looked a little lost out there. Twenty for forty, two fourteen in the touch. Uh, you know, Jordan Howard was out. Maybe that had a little something to do with it. You know, I, I think a lot of people were high on on Miles Sanders really getting it done, but he didn't really step up. Uh, unfortunately, eleven for thirty eight. I mean, you'll take the Ertz nine for ninety four off eleven targets. Goddard got the touchdown though. I mean, uh, this this offense is really hard to trust all around. What do you besides Ertz? What I mean, would, they, oh, would you agree? I mean, just yeah, this whole game in general was exactly the opposite of what I thought. Um, I mean, I was one of those guys that was big on the Miles Sanders train. Um, I, I had like probably like a good eighty percent exposure to him in DFS once it you know was out that Howard wasn't going to play. Um, and yeah, I really thought that if anything. You know, Sanders would, would have a pretty decent game. You know, maybe 50, 60 yards on the ground, maybe another 50, 60 in the air, you know, probably get a touchdown. <clears throat> and if anything, I would have said Ertz was a guy that I, I wouldn't touch. I just, you know, they're so good against the tight ends in New England. And, you know, Ertz was their only obvious, you know, uh, obvious, you know, big guy on, on offense. So I figured he was going to get double teamed, you know, shut down. And, yeah, I, I couldn't have gotten this game more wrong. I was just on the opposite side of everything that happened. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure I was super high on a lot of the Eagles, um, but I definitely thought it would be higher scoring than it was. It was just kind of yeah. a, a drab game all around, man, unfortunately. But, all right, man, well, that's all we got. You got anything else to add? I don't was... think so, but I, I, I don't I – don't... I don't know. Should I give a customary uh, Ebron remark or, or no? <laughs> That's always fun. Why not? Hey, he had a nice I grab today on the end. I don't have anything prepared. I could make something up, I guess, but it, <laughs> no. I, I want it to be from the heart. You You're know? all good, man. All right. Well, hope everyone had a good week, and we will see you all next week. See ya.